What's going on guys, the CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the Atomic Pie single board computer and at $35, I think this is a heck of a deal. So what we have here is a single board computer powered by an x86 Z8350 Intel Atom CPU. These popped up on Amazon for $35. I posted it on my social media and within about 30 minutes they were completely sold out but I'm still gonna leave the link in the description in case they come back in stock. And I'm gonna leave a link to the manufacturer's website because I believe they're still selling them over there. Before we get into this, I do wanna mention power delivery because that's a big question that comes up. You can use the GPIO pins to power this unit. Now they recommend five volt, four amps. So I created this little tiny adapter here with two GPIO connectors on it. And I can plug it right into the header and power the board. For a few extra bucks, you can buy their GPIO power adapter. It'll plug right into the GPIO pins on the Atomic Pi. And then from there, you'll have a 2.5 millimeter barrel jack where you can plug in your power. I am planning on soldering a barrel jack to the upper side of the GPIO pin so I don't have to use this adapter. But for now, this will work for testing. The specs on the Atomic Pi look really good for a $35 single board computer. For the CPU, we have that Intel Atom X5 Z8350. This is a quad core CPU at 1.44 gigahertz with a boost up to 1.92. For the GPU, we have the built-in Intel HD Cherry Trail version, 500 megahertz, 12 execution units. As for the RAM, we get two gigabytes of LPDDR3 at 1600 megahertz. Now this is non-user upgradable. It is soldered to the board. There's 16 gigabytes of onboard storage built in, plus we have that micro SD card slot that's good up to a 256 gigabyte card, or we could run everything from USB. We also get gigabit ethernet, dual band 802.11bgn and AC Wi-Fi, so we can pick up that five gigahertz network. Unfortunately, with the board like it sits for $35, we only get one USB 3.0 port. I was able to attach a four port USB hub and I have a hard drive, keyboard, mouse, and a USB drive plugged in with no issues whatsoever. Full size HDMI, a built in nine access navigation sensor with compass, 26 pin header for power and GPIO located on the bottom. Recommended power supply, five volts, four amps, and it'll pull anywhere from four to 15 watts. Since this board is running an x86 CPU, we have tons of options for operating systems. We can pretty much run anything from Ubuntu 18.04 and up, Windows 10, Android x86, Botocera, Recallbox. There are tons of options out there and I do plan on making more videos like Botocera running on here. I definitely want to test out Android x86, Windows 10, but in this video, I'm going to be running Lubuntu 18.10. When you receive your board, an operating system will be pre-installed. Mine happened to be a modified version of Ubuntu 18.04 with the extra drivers needed for the extra GPIO and the compass and things like that. But if you want to download any other operating system ISO from online, you can just install it from a USB drive like you would with any other x86 PC. Like I mentioned, I will be making several videos on the Atomic Pi. I want to test out a bunch of operating systems, and if there's anything you're interested in seeing, let me know in the comments below. Before we get into the operating system, I just wanted to do a quick size comparison between the Atomic Pi on the left and a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus on the right. As you can see, the Atomic Pi dwarfs the Raspberry Pi. So if you're looking for a super small form factor single board computer for your projects, the Atomic Pi might not be for you. So with all that out of the way, let's get into a little bit of testing. So here we are, I'm running Lubuntu 18.10. We have that Intel Z8350, two gigs of RAM, and that built-in Intel HD GPU. I did run a few benchmarks here, like Blowfish, and we're right in between the older Core 2 duos, anywhere from 2.4 gigahertz up to three gigahertz, depending on what we're doing. I also ran Geekbench 4. For the single core, we scored a 1009. For multi-core, 2694. Now I have seen this a bit higher in Android x86 and Windows with this same CPU. So performance is gonna vary from operating system to operating system. Network speed was pretty good. Up top we have Wi-Fi, and at the bottom here we have Ethernet. Obviously Ethernet's gonna be much faster on pretty much anything you test. And by the way, my Wi-Fi was connected to my five gigahertz network. Now, if you want to take one of these Atomic Pies and use it as a little desktop replacement for simple web browsing, email checking, and even video playback from YouTube or Netflix, it's going to work fine. Here we have a 1080p video. It's actually 4K, but I have it set to 1080p. Super smooth. And browsing the web using Firefox or even Chromium is a great experience on the Atomic Pie. So 
Since I'm here, I figured I'd go ahead and install GIMP and test out some basic image editing. Overall, it's a pretty decent experience, much better than any other ARM board that I tested. I've got a file here that I'm going to open up. It's a simple JPEG with a resolution of 3456 by 2592. I'm going to go ahead and load it up here and I'm going to use the color selection tool. Now what this is going to do is select the exact same color that I click on throughout the whole picture. I've tested this on several single board computers. One of the newer ones, the Nvidia Jetson Nano, does a decent job, but this is much, much faster at selecting the color and taking it out. It's definitely not the fastest or the best in the world, and I wouldn't suggest this specifically for image editing, but it will get you by in a pinch if you need to do some light editing here and there. If you've been looking at the Atomic Pi as a media center, it actually works really well with 720 and 1080p videos. Now this chip was not designed for 4K, but if you want to do 1080p, it'll do it all day long at full speed. I'm running this file from a 32 gigabyte USB 3.0 stick, no stutters at all. And as for CPU usage, I have seen it jump up as high as 75% on a single core, but it usually stays around 30, 35%. This is native storage video playback. It also works great from a little NAS if you have that set up in the house. And if you want to install a custom build of Kodi and stream your favorite movies like that, you can install them here just like you would with any Kodi build. Moving over to some emulation performance. I know my viewers are going to be really interested in this. I've installed PPSSPP here. Unfortunately, this chip only supports OpenGL. We can't do Vulkan. But performance is really good, especially with the PSP emulator. <laughs> First up, we have Tekken Dark Resurrection. This is set at 1x resolution. We could probably go up to 2, but I'm going to be testing at 1x with all the games you see here. Up in the top left-hand corner is the FPS. This game originally ran at 60 FPS on the PSP, and we got full speed. Here's Burnout. This game originally ran at 30 FPS on the PSP hardware, and we're achieving 30 FPS. We're at 100% here. Same story with Ratchet and Clank, a 30 FPS game. Press L button and R button and the X. Press select to enter first person mode. Aim and fire the target on the gate to open it. Moving over to a harder game to emulate, this is God of War Chains of Olympus. It did better than I thought, but we're not going to get full speed out of this, at least running in OpenGL and Linux. Possibly, if we move over to Windows with the Atomic Buy, we could enable DirectX 11 and get better performance out of it. But as it sits in Linux, it's going to be a bit slow with God of War. Taking a look at Dreamcast emulation performance using ReDream. Now with the 2D games, it works great. We got full speed emulation here with the Dreamcast 2D games. This is Marvel vs. Capcom 2, but when we move over to the 3D based games, it's a bit slow. I've personally had really good luck with ReDream on lower end systems, and that's one of the reasons I chose it here instead of using Raycast. We could always go back and use Raycast, and I'll be showing that off in another video. But I'm really not sure if Raycast is going to perform any better with these 3D based Dreamcast games. And finally, GameCube emulation using Dolphin. As you can see, we're really slow here. There is a chance we could get better performance in Windows using DirectX 11, but I doubt we're going to be at full speed with a lot of these games. This is a low-end chip. So in the end, this is an awesome little $35 single board computer. It is the best performing single board computer that I've ever messed around with for $35. Now, it doesn't mean that it's the best single board computer, but for the price point here, this is an awesome deal. 
I do wish they would have added at least one more USB 2.0 port on the main board itself, but I can get by with a single USB 3.0 port and a four port hub. This was my initial video on the Atomic Pi. I know you guys want to see more on this thing, so I will have a few more videos coming up this week. So definitely subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date. In the end, it's well worth $35. I will leave links to Amazon in the description. Hopefully it's back in stock soon. If you're unable to pick this up on Amazon, I will leave a link to the official website. I believe they're selling them there, but you might be able to find out a little more information over there and on the forums. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.